I'll put that there. You can see the feeding. You mean your guests? Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know it was on video. <laughs> well, it would be my support pet, and my guest. Yeah. <laughs> In this video, we are going to be doing. I'm going to start with administering medications, and then I will switch over to feeding, and then lastly, I will remove, and that's how we will end our video. So, we'll do this second. All your support animal hair. Okay. <laughs> yes. So, make a blanket with our support animal. Administering medications, we will do first. Let me kind of organize here. So, what we will do for administering medication is I will. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm doing it. So, I'm going to be working on these while we're talking. So, what I would do is I would do hand hygiene, provide for privacy. I would do two patient identifiers, name and date of birth of the patient. Um, I've asked you that many times, so I won't make you do that again since I've been in the room the whole time. Okay, I'm remembering my name now. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm Jane Doe Smith, 1029-1965. Perfect. <laughs> I would verify placement of the NG tube. Um, per policy procedure and then I'm going to look at the medications that are provided and verify appropriateness for the NG tube um, and making sure that I can crush those and mix those up with water um, to instill because some medications can't be crushed so I would make sure that they are appropriate for NG tube insertion here um, and I've got my um, medications next to the bed here. And I also have some water because you wanna make sure that you mix them with some water um, to ensure that you're pushing that in. So the first thing that I'd actually do, I'd verify that placement here. And then I would get my medication. So I mixed up one medication at a time and luckily she only has one pill that she needs to take this morning and that is her ibuprofen. So we've got her ibuprofen mixed up in here and we will pull up 30 milliliters of water, just plain water, and we're going to flush that through the tube first. Then we're going to bring up 30 milliliters of the solution, so of the medication and we're going to instill that slowly at a good pace that way it doesn't hurt her stomach and then we're going to draw up 30 more milliliters of water and we're going to push that through to ensure that it gets all the way through her stomach and nothing gets stuck left in this ng tube and i would clamp and unclamp at the appropriate times and then um we're going to want to make sure that we um if she is hooked up to suction that we're going to want to take her off suction and then if she is on suction then we're going to want to take her off suction and wait about 45 minutes until the stomach has time to absorb that medication and then we'll hook her back up to suction that way she gets the effects of the medication so after that i would document provide for privacy remove my gloves do hand hygiene and confirm that the patient feels better i would do everything that i was supposed to do previously so i would do my double checks for medications um, I would do my three checks and then I would also do um, my medication reconciliation. Um, I believe that's what it's called. And I would make sure that she didn't have any allergies to that medication. All of those safety checks I would make sure that I did um, prior to administering medication. And I would check back up on her in 30 to 45 minutes and make sure that those medications are working in the appropriate ways. So that concludes administering medications. And then the next thing that I am going to do here is I'll do um, gavage or feeding. And there's a few more steps to this one than the usual, than the other ones. So I would provide hand hygiene, 
I would do hand hygiene, provide the privacy, identify my patient, um, I would put my gloves on, I would verify placement of the NG tube, I would um, do that a number of different ways. So I would do pH tests and assess for the pH um, of the aspirate. I would look at the aspirate and, and document and measure that per policy procedure. And then I would instill that aspirate back into the stomach if um, policy procedure. And let me get my um, everything here. So I've got my, so I'm, I'm kind of gathering my supplies because I have everything out right now. So I've got my catheter tip syringe and graduated cylinder. I have my pH test over here. I have my, um, I have my feeding and then um, whatever, I'll read that solution because there is a, it's a formula with 50% concentration, 350 milliliter per and through the NG tube at five milliliters a minute. So we have all of our pertinent information. We have our concentration, our solution. We have the um, volume of the solution. We have the rate of the solution um, and the formula. So we have all that um, situated in our solution here. And then on the bottom, that's our administering meds, which we just did. So we have all of that. So I would make sure that I'd want to check um, as appropriate here. And we do have our pump feeding. We don't have bolus feeding, but I'll explain that a little bit later. So we have our pump. I have my stethoscope to make sure that um, I can do my abdominal assessment. So the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is verify that tube placement. So I'm gonna verify because we are um, giving feeding, we're gonna wanna make sure that we double check because we do not want it to be in the wrong place. So I would verify my patient and her date of birth. And then I'm gonna look here and I'm gonna test this um, multiple different ways just to ensure that we do have the correct placement. So the first thing that I'm going to do is aspirate and get um, our pH. So we have aspirated and it, and I put that in my pH tester here. And we have, it's green coffee ground um, aspirate with a pH of 3.8. And then um, I'm gonna wanna flush 30 mil, I'm gonna wanna put that back in here and flush 30 milliliters of air in there too. And then I'm gonna wanna aspirate. Did I say that right? I would flush, <laughs> I would flush air into it and first, and then I would get that aspirate, I would pull that aspirate back. I'm losing my mind today. Oh, I can okay. because I know the CPT code for that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, I'm also going to, I have my measuring tape here, so I'm going to want to measure the, um, I'm going to look for that black dot, that's going to be a verification key. So we have that black dot right there, which is in the appropriate place. I'm going to want to measure how long the exposed tu tubing is, and it is 19, which is what it was, um, when we placed it, that was our confirmation of placement. And then, um, these gloves aren't sitting on me. You gonna walk in here or not? Um, and then the next thing that I'm going to do is when I pull back that aspirate, I'm going to want to measure that per policy procedure. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to want to do is, I will talk a little bit about the feeding here. So if it is a um, bolus feeding, gravity is kind of gonna do its thing. And for this, we're gonna wanna make sure that we're labeling our lines, we're doing all of our safety checks, um, but labeling our lines for bolus, we're gonna wanna set it up to gravity, and then we would connect that to the patient. But here today, we have a, it's leaking, we have a pump, um, so, on this, we're going to want to make sure that let me get a piece of tape and we're going to want to, on the line, put for internal use only. So, 
on our line, our invisible line here, we would tape that and put for internal use only. Um, but anyway, we would set up the pump and we would prime that ahead of time. We're going to look at the expiration date. Expiration date is 1 2023. Um, so it is still good until 2023. I'm going to want to do our safety check here. So we have a formula with a concentration of 5%, 350 milliliters, NG tube, 5 milliliters a minute. So I program the pump 5 milliliters a minute and do the rate and the concentration um, and all of that correctly. Um, the next thing that I would do is connect our patient up to this feeding. So here we have our primed line. So I would connect our patient to this line and let the feeding run. And then when the feeding gets done, I'm going to remove the patient, gonna clamp and unclamp at appropriate times. And then um, I'm going to instill, I'm gonna do 30 milliliters of water and I'm going to flush the line with 30 milliliters of water after that feeding just to make sure that she gets all of that. And then um, per every four hours or policy procedure, I'm gonna come back and flush the, water, the line with 30 milliliters of water again. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove my gloves. I don't know why I keep doing this. And I'm, going to doing again. I'm going to remove my gloves. I'm going to document this procedure. I'm going to do hand hygiene, check up on my patient, make sure my patient's comfortable. Making sure that throughout feeding, we want to always get the head of the bed above 30 because we do not want our patient to aspirate. And I identified my patient and making sure that I got everything. I would provide a focus system as needed. I want to always assess the abdomen um, before I give feeding. So I would do a focus abdominal assessment before giving a feeding. You just want to make sure that um, everything is okay and after the feeding just to verify that placement. Even though we already did in every way that we could possible before, we still want to just verify after. Okay and you're clamped. So I clamped that tubing. Okay. And then now we have, let's see here. Okay. We already did our internal feeding and administered our meds and regimented. And we have removing the NG tube, which is an exciting time for patients. Yeah, <laughs> but you're so excited to get that NG tube. So I would remove, so I would, um, do hand hygiene, provide for privacy. Um, I would come in, before I removed, I would always wanna do focused abdominal assessment. Um, I would identify my patient, her name and date of birth. I would do my focus. Jane Doe Smith, 10 1965. <laughs> Great, that sounds perfect. Um, always ask for pain whenever you're doing these assessments. It's just good to know. What is your pain level on the scale of zero to 10? 10 being the worst pain you ever felt in your life, zero being none. One. A one? I need to get my focus go back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's good. We love to hear that. So what I'm going to do is I would assess her abdomen looking for distension. I'm not going to do that um, for the purpose of the video, but I, I assessed it and it looked good. <laughs> and then I'm going to listen to all four quadrants. Everything sounds great. I'm going to palpate her abdomen. Do you have any tenderness? No, ma'am. No, ma'am, she <laughs> says. Okay. So I did our focus assessment here. I'm going to look and verify this order here. So remove NG tube. Um, so that's what we will be doing today. I'm going to make sure that the head of the bed is above 30 because that is always gold standard um, with preventing aspiration, aspiration precautions. I, um, after I do that abdominal assessment, if she is connected to section, I'm going to want to take her off section um, and disconnect that as appropriate. Um, I'm going to put my gloves on for this. And then um, while I'm removing this NG tube, I'm going to instruct the patient to hold her breath um, as I pull this tube out. And I'm also going to flush this tube with air because 
our biggest concern now after removing this is gonna be aspiration. So I would flush this tube with 30 milliliters of air and then I would clamp it back. So unclamp and then clamp it. And then I would also, so I'm just gonna pinch it for the purpose of that. And then um, I would instruct the client to take a dig, big deep breath and I'm going to remove it Sorry, I wouldn't hit you with that though. In a swift um, and even motion and try to pull it out, just getting that out as fast as I can here. And then um, the last thing that I am going to do is I'm going to ask the, I would identify the patient's name and date of birth. I, I think we did that. We don't have to say it again. <laughs> um, and then I would verify that the patient's comfortable. I would discard this per policy procedure, so I've discarded this in the appropriate place. Remove my gloves, do hand hygiene, and document. When documenting about NG, you always wanna do what type of NG tube it is. So say this was a, a 12 French, um, so I would make sure that I wanted to document that just so that um, if anyone wanted to go back and look and see what she had, I would do that. And then after I pull this out, I'm gonna be assessing her nares. So I'm gonna be looking and making sure there's no skin breakdown or irritation. If there is, we can put some petroleum jelly or um, that's if she's not on oxygen. Um, but I would put some uh, irritant um, stopper on there. <laughs> I can't think of the word. Um, but I would put some irritant, some irritant stuff on her nose. And then I'd come back and check on her um, and make sure that she is able to tolerate normal food now. Thank you, so, Nurse Sally. I will put that all there. Can I have you tomorrow, too? <laughs> <laughs> and I think that completes removing NG tube. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else I forgot in the previous video. Don't know what I'm talking in front of my <laughs> harsh. And I'd make sure our patient was comfortable and come back and check on her in a little bit. This concludes part three of our video. Thank you.